see, Hayley suffers from progeria, a rare ageing disease that sees kids struck down by the same illnesses that cripple their grandparents. The tapestry of human life is dotted with the stories of individuals who face rare challenges, showing resilience in the face of adversity. Each person on this video represents a unique journey, dealing with rare diseases that many might never encounter. Let us delve into their lives, starting with Maria's experience with Hutchinson-Guilford progeria syndrome. Number one, Maria, living with Hutchinson-Guilford progeria syndrome. Hutchinson-Guilford progeria syndrome, HGPS, is an uncommon genetic disorder that accelerates aging in children. Maria, a vivacious 12-year-old, seems like any other preteen at a glance, with her lively spirit and effervescent laughter. Yet her small stature, thinning hair and the wisdom in her eyes betray the battle she's been fighting since her infancy. Maria's parents first noticed something amiss when she was merely a year old. Unlike her peers, she didn't grow at the expected rate and began showing signs of skin hardening. It was a heart-wrenching moment when they received the diagnosis of HGPS, a condition that affects roughly one in every four million births. Social interactions are crucial for Maria. The support from her friends who treat her no differently has been instrumental in shaping her perspective. Her best friend Lucy recalls countless sleepovers, laughter sessions, and even moments when both cried, pondering the unfairness of life. Yet Maria's resolve has often lifted the spirits of those around her. The medical interventions for HGPS are minimal. Most treatments aim at alleviating symptoms rather than curing the condition. Maria goes for regular cardiac checkups, as cardiovascular complications are common in progeria patients. Additionally, she undergoes physiotherapy to maintain mobility. While many might view Maria's journey as one filled with challenges and adversities, she chooses to see it differently. In her own words, I've been given a chance to experience life in a unique way. Every day is precious, and I intend to make the most of it. This sentiment is echoed by everyone who knows her, inspired by her courage and relentless spirit. Through Maria, we're reminded of the indomitable human spirit and the ability to find joy, even when faced with the harshest of realities. Her life is a testament to embracing every moment and seeking happiness, irrespective of the challenges thrown our way. Number two, James. A glimpse into hyper-IgM syndrome. James was always the child with a glowing face, full of energy and an infectious sense of humor. However, behind that joyful demeanor lay a battle with hyper-IgM syndrome, a condition that made his immune system weak and prone to repeated infections. But this story isn't just about a disease. It's about a young boy's strength, perseverance, and the community that rallied behind him. From a very early age, James's parents noticed he was often sick. Common colds lasted longer than usual, and minor injuries took weeks to heal. Concerned by his frequent illnesses, they sought medical opinions and, after numerous tests, were introduced to the world of hyper-IgM syndrome. This rare genetic disorder prevents the immune system from producing sufficient amounts of specific types of antibodies, leaving individuals susceptible to various infections. While most children were worrying about homework or the next soccer match, James often found himself in hospital rooms, undergoing treatments or preventive measures against potential infections. Despite the sterile environment and the repetitive routine of medications, he always found ways to brighten up the place. Hospital staff often recalled his knack for cracking jokes or organizing little performances for other kids in the pediatric ward. The resilience James showcased wasn't just a personal trait, but a reflection of the support system he had. His parents were his pillars, always optimistic and creating an environment where he felt normal. His younger sister, Amelia, was his playmate and protector, ensuring he never felt left out during neighborhood games or events. Research and medical interventions for hyper-IgM syndrome have been ongoing. Regular infusions of antibodies, known as immunoglobulin replacement therapy, became a part of James's routine. These infusions helped provide him with the antibodies his body couldn't produce, reducing the frequency of infections. As James grew older, he channeled his experiences into advocacy. By sharing his journey, he aimed to raise awareness about hyper-IgM syndrome and the importance of early diagnosis. He believed that knowledge was power and hoped that his story could be a beacon of hope for others facing similar challenges. 
James's life, though fraught with medical complications, was rich in moments of love, support, and sheer determination. Through his journey, one thing became abundantly clear. While rare diseases might define a part of an individual's life, they never define the entirety of their spirit. Number 3. Aisha. The Struggles of Ondine's Curse. Congenital Central Hypoventilation Syndrome. At the heart of an urban city, in a vibrant neighborhood known for its bustling markets and harmonious diversity, lived Aisha, a young woman with a tale unlike any other. While her name meant alive or living, she battled a rare condition known as Ondine's Curse, or Congenital Central Hypoventilation Syndrome, CCHS. A condition where, simply put, she would forget to breathe while sleeping. When Aisha was born, her radiant eyes and heartwarming smiles masked an underlying condition that puzzled doctors for the initial weeks. Every time she drifted off to sleep, her breathing would become incredibly shallow, or she'd stop breathing altogether. The monitors attached to her would blare alarms, sending nurses and doctors into a frantic rush. It wasn't long before the diagnosis of CCHS was established. Growing up, nights at Aisha's house were different. While the world outside plunged into darkness and people surrendered to dreams, Aisha's room was alive with the hum of medical equipment. Ventilators and monitors became her nocturnal companions, ensuring she breathed normally while she slept. Her parents often took shifts, keeping a watchful eye, ensuring the machines functioned without glitch. However, daylight brought a different Aisha. Spirited, Lively and full of zest, she plunged into daily activities with an enthusiasm that was infectious. She was a brilliant student, an accomplished pianist, and had a passion for mural painting. Among the things that truly defined Aisha was her sense of humor. She often joked about her condition, saying she was the only one among her peers who genuinely had a resting face. Her friends and family reciprocated this light-hearted approach, ensuring that while they respected the gravity of her condition, they didn't let it become a somber shadow over their interactions. Medical advancements offered some respite. As she entered adulthood, Aisha explored the option of diaphragm pacing, a procedure that reduces dependency on ventilators. While not a cure, it provided her with more freedom, especially during nighttime. Life with Ondine's curse was a juxtaposition for Aisha. While nights were a reminder of her unique condition, days were evidence of her remarkable spirit. Her journey was not just about living with a rare disease, but it was a testament to human resilience, adaptability, and the ability to find joy amidst challenges. Aisha's story is a profound reminder that while some battles are invisible, the strength displayed during those battles is palpable and inspiring. Number four. Leonardo, stiff person syndrome, a life in rigidity. In the heart of Florence, often synonymous with art and renaissance, lived Leonardo, a man whose life was a canvas, albeit painted with the strokes of stiff person syndrome, SPS. This rare neurological disorder characterized by stiffness and functional impairment made Leonardo's muscles contract involuntarily, leading to painful spasms. The onset of SPS in Leonardo's life was insidious. Initially dismissed as stress-related tension or mere muscle cramps, the sporadic stiffness slowly crept into his daily life, making ordinary tasks seem monumental. Walking became a challenge, and the artist in him grieved as holding brushes steadily turned into a struggle. The once fluid painter found himself bound by an invisible force, restricting his movements and freedom. Amidst the physical challenges, it was the unpredictability of SPS that weighed heavily on Leonardo. The sudden onset of spasms, often triggered by external stimuli like loud noises, meant he had to be perpetually vigilant. Social gatherings, music concerts, or bustling markets which he once reveled in were now approached with caution. However, one of the defining elements of Leonardo's journey with SPS was his relentless pursuit of knowledge. Collaborating with neurologists, he endeavored to understand the intricacies of his condition. This quest led him to therapy sessions, where he learned techniques to manage his symptoms better. Physical therapy became a ritual, helping him maintain some muscle flexibility and strength. But beyond medical interventions and therapies, it was Leonardo's philosophical approach to life that truly defined him. He often mused about the rigidity of his body being a reflection of life's adversities, and how, much like his art, 
one could find ways to maneuver through, creating beauty amidst constraints. Leonardo's life was a testament to the power of resilience, adaptability, and creativity in the face of adversity. His journey with stiff person syndrome was not just about battling a rare disease, but was a larger narrative on the human spirit's ability to find meaning, purpose, and beauty even when confronted with the most daunting challenges. Number 5. Sophie, Perineoplastic Pemphigus, A Skin Battle Sophie's journey is not a tale of grand adventures or globe-trotting escapades. It's an intimate story of a woman fighting an invisible battle against Perineoplastic Pemphigus, a rare autoimmune blistering disorder associated with malignancies. This condition left Sophie with painful lesions, not just on the surface of her skin, but also on her inner mucous membranes. The early signs for Sophie were innocuous. A persistent sore throat and some oral ulcers were attributed to common infections. But as weeks turned into months, her condition worsened. Patches of her skin became blistered and tender to touch, and eating became an ordeal due to painful sores in her mouth and throat. It was only after extensive tests that doctors identified the cause as perineoplastic pemphigus. The diagnosis was a double-edged sword. While it explained the painful blisters, it also indicated an underlying malignancy, often the trigger for this skin disorder. For Sophie, it was a tumor in her chest. Thus began dual battles, one against the skin ailment and the other against the cancer within. Medical treatments were aggressive. Alongside cancer therapies, she received immunosuppressant drugs and steroids to manage her skin condition. While the treatments worked on her body, Sophie found solace in literature. Reading became her escape, transporting her to worlds where pain and blisters were non-existent. Her living room's bookshelf, filled with titles ranging from fantasy epics to historic narratives, bore testament to her literary adventures. But what truly defined Sophie's battle with perineoplastic pemphigus was her tenacity to document it. She began journaling her journey, capturing the lows of painful flare-ups and the highs of clear skin days. These journals morphed into a blog where she connected with others suffering from rare diseases. The digital platform became a space of shared experiences, insights, and above all, mutual support. Sophie's story, steeped in pain and challenges, is fundamentally one of hope. It underscores the human ability to adapt, persevere, and find purpose. In her battle against perineoplastic pemphigus, Sophie not only fought for herself, but became a beacon of hope, guidance, and inspiration for countless others navigating the choppy waters of rare medical conditions. Number 6. Liam. Fighting the Effects of Alcaptanuria. Liam's tale is one of resilience against alcaptanuria, a metabolic disorder causing one's urine to turn black when exposed to air. Beyond this unusual symptom, it has more profound effects, like the darkening of connective tissues and arthritis-like joint issues. Born with this genetic condition, Liam's early years went undiagnosed until the peculiar symptom was noticed during his toddler years. While most children learned about colors through crayons and rainbows, Liam had an early lesson about the hue of his urine. But it wasn't just the color that made Liam's journey challenging. As he stepped into his teenage years, joint pain became a constant companion, restricting his mobility. Basketball, once a passion, transformed into a spectator sport for Liam. Instead of sulking, he switched his love for playing to coaching, guiding younger kids and sharing his love for the game. Through adapting, Liam showcased that life's essence wasn't about the activities we do, but the spirit in which we engage with them. As Liam grew older, managing joint stiffness became crucial. Physical therapy, coupled with dietary changes, became his regimen. However, Liam's most significant accomplishment was his ability to raise awareness about alcaptanuria, ensuring early diagnosis and support for others affected by it. Number 7. Natasha the world of Erdheim Chester disease. Natasha's life was a maze, with every corner revealing a new challenge presented by Erdheim Chester disease, a rare form of non-Langerhans cell histiocytosis. It's characterized by an overproduction of white blood cells, leading to tumors in various parts of the body. Initially misdiagnosed, Natasha spent years seeking answers for her myriad of symptoms. From bone pain to neurological complications, the disease's manifestations were as varied as they were debilitating. But amid the storm of symptoms, her indomitable spirit stood firm. 
Her professional life saw adjustments. The once field journalist turned to desk roles, focusing on editorials and interviews. But instead of viewing it as a setback, Natasha saw it as an opportunity to delve deeper into stories, extracting nuances and layers she might have previously missed. Medical treatments were rigorous, with Natasha often subjecting herself to experimental therapies, hoping to find a solution. Throughout this, her family became her anchor, providing both emotional and logistical support. Despite her struggles, Natasha's spirit remained undeterred. Using her journalistic skills, she documented her experiences, giving the world an intimate look into the life of someone battling Erdheim-Chester disease. Through her words, she not only sought solace for herself, but also forged a path of understanding and empathy for others in similar situations. Number 8. Oliver, Navigating Life with Perineoplastic Cerebellar Degeneration Oliver, once a ballet dancer known for his impeccable balance and grace, faced an ironic twist in life when diagnosed with perineoplastic cerebellar degeneration, PCD. This rare neurological disorder, often tied to underlying cancers, affected Oliver's cerebellum, responsible for coordination and movement. His initial symptoms were subtle, a missed step during rehearsals or a slight tremor in his hands. However, as weeks progressed, these irregularities magnified. The stage, which was once his realm, became a challenge, with turns inducing dizziness and jumps leading to imbalance. Though his ballet shoes were hung, Oliver's dance with life continued. Embracing his condition, he transitioned from performer to choreographer, channeling his deep understanding of movement and body dynamics into creating masterpieces for others to execute. Medical interventions, paired with physiotherapy, became part of his routine. Still, Oliver's true strength was his ability to adapt and redefine his identity. No longer a dancer in the physical sense, he danced through words, instructions, and the joy he derived from seeing his visions come alive on stage. Number 9. Isabella. The Hidden Pain of Fibrodysphagia Ossificans Progressiva. Isabella's radiant smile and twinkling eyes hid a secret. Beneath her skin, her muscles and soft tissues were gradually turning into bone, a condition known as Fibrodysplasia Ossificans Progressiva, FOP. This rare genetic disorder, often dubbed the Stone Man Syndrome, meant that any injury could lead to bone growth in unwanted areas. As a child, Isabella was incredibly active, running around, scraping her knees and climbing trees. But each bruise or sprain brought the risk of new bone formation, restricting movement in that area. By her teens, her mobility was significantly compromised, with her joints freezing in place. But where her body limited her, Isabella's spirit soared. She dived into the world of academia, becoming a scholar and researcher on FOP. While her physical world was shrinking, her intellectual horizons expanded exponentially. The real beauty of Isabella's journey was her relentless optimism. Wheelchair-bound, she traveled, giving lectures, raising awareness, and fostering a community for those with FOP. Her life, while marked by physical rigidity, was a testament to flexibility, adaptability, and the power of the human spirit to rise above challenges. Number 10. Ming battling the rare pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration. In the sprawling metropolis of Shanghai, Ming's life was a juxtaposition. This vibrant city buzzed with energy, but inside Ming's body, a silent battle raged against pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration, PKN. A rare type of neurodegeneration with brain iron accumulation. PKN disrupted neural pathways, leading to movement disorders and cognitive challenges. From a young age, Ming's movements were different. His gait was stiff, his speech slightly slurred, and tasks requiring dexterity, like tying shoelaces, became monumental challenges. School was a realm of both academic rigor and physical hurdles, as writing became progressively harder with the tremors setting in. However, Ming's mental acumen remained sharp. He took to technology, using voice recognition and other assistive tools, turning his computer into an extension of himself. This digital prowess led him to coding where he excelled, creating software that catered specifically to those with motor disabilities. As PKN progressed, so did Ming's determination. While physical therapies were vital, his ventures into the tech world created a bridge of connection, not just for himself, but for others with similar challenges. 
Ming's journey was less about his fight with PKN and more about how he turned a personal challenge into a universal solution. Number 11. Hannah. Life with Hyper IgD Syndrome. Nestled in the Dutch countryside, Hannah's world was a tapestry of tulip fields and recurring fevers. She was diagnosed with Hyper IgD Syndrome, a rare genetic disorder characterized by periodic episodes of inflammation, fever, and painful symptoms. Every few weeks, like clockwork, Hannah would be bedridden with high fevers, abdominal pain, and skin rashes. These episodes, often lasting days, disrupted her schooling, social life, and simple joys like cycling through the fields. But Hannah's resilience was noteworthy. Between feverish bouts, she immersed herself in art, finding solace in painting and sketching. Her canvases became reflections of her experiences, with vibrant colors capturing her good days and darker shades echoing her painful episodes. Her condition also made her a beacon in the rare disease community. She started a support group, bringing together those with hyper-IgD and other periodic fever syndromes. These meetings were more than just therapy. They were spaces of shared experiences, laughter, and collective strength. While the periodic fevers kept returning, so did Hannah's zest for life. Her story is not just about living with hyper-IgD syndrome, it's about the art of finding beauty, community, and purpose amidst the unpredictability of life. Number 12. Carlos. Understanding the intricacies of Alstrom syndrome. The bustling streets of Mexico City were both a challenge and an adventure for Carlos, grappling with the complexities of Alstrom syndrome. A rare genetically inherited condition Alstrom syndrome predominantly affects vision, hearing, and can lead to a slew of systemic symptoms. For Carlos, the world began dimming early. His vision became clouded, and by his teens he was heavily reliant on hearing aids. But it wasn't just the sensory losses, shortness of breath and obesity. Other indicators of the syndrome began shaping his life. Yet Carlos's spirit was indomitable. Passionate about music, he began feeling sounds rather than hearing them, and soon enough, he was a sought-after percussionist in local bands. His fingers danced on drums, turning sensory loss into rhythmic gains. Navigating through life required adjustments. Carlos embraced technology with apps aiding his daily tasks. But more than gadgets, it was community outreach that gave him purpose. He became an advocate, shedding light on Alstrom syndrome, ensuring early diagnosis, and aiding affected families in coping. Number 13. Elena the daily struggles of Malde de Barquemont syndrome. The serenity of the Mediterranean Sea was Elena's undoing. A simple cruise vacation left her with Malde de Barquemont syndrome, MDDS, a neurological condition making her constantly feel like she was rocking or swaying, as if still on that ship. Returning to her home in Barcelona, Elena's world was perpetually in motion. The ground felt unstable, and her once stable life now had the uncertainty of a ship lost at sea. Walking on the cobbled streets, which she once adored, became an ordeal. Medical professionals were initially baffled. MDDS is rare, and Elena's symptoms were dismissed as psychological. But she knew this disorienting feeling wasn't in her head. A diagnosis finally came, but treatments were experimental at best. Yet every challenge was met with Elena's determination. Yoga and meditation became her anchors, providing a semblance of balance in her unsteady world. Elena also turned her ordeal into outreach, forming support groups for MDDS sufferers, turning shared challenges into collective resilience. Though the sensation of swaying never truly left, Elena's journey became one of grounding herself amidst the unsteadiness, finding stability in her mind even when the world around her seemed to constantly tilt. Number 14. Jackson. A journey through the challenges of Sturge Weber syndrome. Amidst the sprawling suburbs of Atlanta, Jackson's story unfolded, distinctively marked by Sturge Weber syndrome. This congenital condition, primarily identified by a port wine stain on the face, is not merely skin deep. It extends to the brain's blood vessels, often resulting in seizures, glaucoma, and developmental delays. As a child, Jackson's facial mark was the least of his worries. The seizures, unpredictable and intense, disrupted his formative years. School, a place of learning and exploration, often became a setting for medical emergencies. As the seizure's intensity increased, so did the whispers in the hallway, the stairs, and the hushed tones of concern. But adversity has a way of shaping character. 
Jackson, through sheer will, became a maestro at the piano, using music as an escape from his physiological battles. The rhythm and melodies offered a respite, a world where his condition didn't define him. With advancements in medical treatments, Jackson's seizures became more manageable, and with every challenge the syndrome presented, he countered with passion, determination, and a sense of purpose, transforming his personal struggles into inspiring symphonies for the world to hear. Number 15. Luna, Embracing Life with Erythromyalgia In the quaint town of Verona, Italy, Luna's tale was as intense as the condition she grappled with, erythromyalgia, also known as the man-on-fire syndrome. This rare disorder manifests as burning pain, often in the extremities, aggravated by warmth and alleviated paradoxically by cool environments. Luna's feet were her bane. What started as sporadic episodes of warmth escalated into intense burning sensations. Summers, once a time of joy and gelato by the streets, became dreaded with the sun intensifying her pain. However, Luna's spirit was unyielding. While erythromyalgia tried to dictate her life, she crafted her narrative. During warmer months, she became nocturnal, exploring Verona's beauty under the moonlight, finding solace in its cool embrace. Creativity flourished within constraints. Luna began writing, her prose painting vivid pictures of life with a rare condition. Through her words, erythromyalgia was no longer an obscure term. It was a lived experience, raw and real. Though the burning sensations frequently threatened to overshadow her essence, Luna's spirit, much like the moon she loved, shone brilliantly through the darkest times, casting a glow of hope, resilience, and inspiration.